Let's turn our Bibles to book of Genesis. Book of Genesis, chapter 22. Book of Genesis, chapter 22. We'll be looking at verses 1 through 14. And it is a very familiar story, the offering of Isaac. Genesis, chapter 22, verses 1 through 14. The title message is very simple, a faithful man, a faithful man. Genesis chapter 22, verse 1. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham. And he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and settled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clapped the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife. And they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Verse 8. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. And they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. Verse 10. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lead, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. Verse 14, and Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Ira, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. Brother Caleb, can you play for the message? Dear Father, thank you for gathering us once again. It's a beautiful day, Lord Father, so that we can sing praise unto you and to have fellowship and, of course, to listen to your word, Lord Father. We're about to listen to the Pastor Jay's preaching. We pray that you please help us open our ears and our hearts so we can listen to what you have to say to us, Lord, and help us to change our hearts and our minds and our lives through it. Lord, please help us be faithful. Whatever is distract that may be distracting us, Lord, uh, whatever heartaches that we have, whatever hardships that we may have, Lord, please help us to put it aside, Lord, and help us to keep our uh, eyes on you as we listen to this preaching, Lord. Father, we pray that you please uh, bless us for the rest of the day, Lord. Father, uh, Pastor Jay, who spent a lot of hours spent, uh, preparing for this preaching, I pray that you please bless him, deal with him as he preaches your word to us, Lord. Help us to hear these words and help us change our lives, Lord. Bless us for the rest of the day. And those of us who are still on their way, Lord, please bless them and help them to get your safety. Please come to Lord. Even so come with Jesus. In Jesus Christ, let me pray. Amen. 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 A faithful man. We all know the story of Abraham and Isaac. It is one of the greatest pictures of crucifixion of Jesus Christ you will read in the entire Bible. One of the ways to get a blessing out of the Old Testament is to study the types found in it. Yeah. You, know, you should read the Old Testament. You know, some people don't read the Old Testament. They just stick with the New Testament. But you need to read the whole Bible yeah. because you get a lot of blessing out of it. In these historical accounts, written in the Old Testament, there are types of New Testament doctrine that you can see in the New Testament events, such as this. 
this typology of Old Testament shows you that someone besides the human authors wrote the book. So that's why it's God inspired. I mean, who'd have, who'd have dunk it, right? You know, this picture of Abraham, Isaac, is the picture of Jesus Christ dying on the cross for you and me. The, play, the crucifixion took place A.D. 33. So thousands of years before, it was already prophesied. However, many of the new versions corrupt this doctrine. Why? Because they change verse 8. You know, when we look at verse 8, the Bible says God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So he's providing himself. That's Lord Jesus Christ, God himself. It shows the Trinity, but other versions change it. God will provide for himself. And you could see the difference. That's why it is very important for anybody who wants to learn the word of God, grow in the faith, you use the right word of God, which is King James Bible. A faithful man is hard to find this day and age. If you could have maybe five faithful friends in your life, you're a blessed person. When I mean faithful, they will be on your side and they will obey, do without any hesitation with their own life on the line. If you have five of those people in your life, you're a very blessed person. If you even have three, you're blessed. If you have two, you're still blessed. Even one, you should be thankful. Many people this day and age are very unfaithful. Why? Because people are selfish. They only want what's good for themselves. They only strive to meet people. Why? So that they, it could be a benefit to their own lives. So being faithful is trusting and doing your best, obeying God's word. Simple as that. If you obey God's word, no matter what the occasion, situation, and circumstance is, you are being faithful. And you don't have to think too deep about it. You know, how can I be faithful? Right? Just be faithful to God's word. Right? If God's word said, obey your parents, then you obey your parents. Right? Love your wives, husbands, you, you, you love your wives. Right? You know? you know, obey your husbands, you obey your husbands. Right? So you just believe and obey what the Bible says, then you will be faithful. But how many faithful men are out there this day and age? The character of new or this Christians in this day and age are worse than unsaved people even in the 80s, 70s, 50s, even before 2000. It has really deteriorated. It's gone down the toilet. You know, people don't have any backbones anymore. They don't stand up for anything. You know, you're like chameleon. Even as a saved Christian, you're, you can't act like chameleon. You can't act like the world. You're a chameleon. If someone says this, you go that way. If someone says that, you go that way. You get swayed very easily. So, Typical characteristic of an unfaithful person is that they don't stand for anything. They just go whatever news says, or they go whatever any friend says, you know, anybody says. Christian should always stand for the word of God, no matter what the situation is. Even if someone has a gun to your head, you should be standing up for the word of God. I mean, have you ever thought about days that will come if Lord tarries, you know, if the persecutions do come, I mean, how are you going to stand up for the word of God? Think about, you know, forefathers of faith during the days of Inquisition, during the days of World War I and II. They were, you know, arrested, and a lot of times they were tortured, and a lot of times they wanted them to deny their faith. Just say that Jesus Christ is not the Lord. Just say the church has a final authority. 
then we'll spare your child, we'll spare your wife, and we'll give you a you know, clean death, less painful death. However, many of those Christians die for their faith. They saw their children right in front of their eyes get torn apart by wild animals. They saw the spear go through their pregnant wife's belly. I mean, can you imagine if you see your other half with your child because you stand up for the faith, because you are not denying Jesus Christ? Spear goes through their you know, stomach, blood gushes out, and they just die slowly and painfully right in front of your face. But think about it. Those people actually kept their faith. I mean, they stood for Lord Jesus Christ. But this day and age, when it's hot, when it's a little uncomfortable for you and me, we don't do anything for the Lord. We, we just, you know, oh, you know what? I, I can't do it today. You know, for some, think about it. If you compare your faith to those people who had to give up their own life or see their children, see their wives and husbands, you know, get tortured and get torn apart and burn at the stake. You compare those faith, right? I mean, where are you, right? Are you, like, close to, you know, people dying for the Lord? Or are you a lot more closer to the bottom here, you know, very backslidden, you know, Christian, you know, being very comfortable in America, just doing nothing for the Lord, not standing, any, standing up for the Lord at all? Because... If you were to look at Genesis chapter 22, verse 1, let's look at Genesis chapter 2, verse 1. The Bible says, And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham. So God tempted Abraham. What does that mean? Was it, was it tempting him to like sin? No. I mean, James 1.13 says that God doesn't tempt any man, and neither can God be tempted. You read in Genesis 22.1 that God tempted Abraham. And people say that is a contradiction in the Bible, right? Because they don't do their study. You don't do your study. That's why you can't answer these questions. Think about it. Faithful men should be able to be faithful in learning the word of God and be able to answer some of those questions. Because there's going to be smart aleck people out there who wants to destroy your faith and who wants to make you look bad in front of other people and say, hey, Genesis 22, 20, verse 1 says, God tempt Abraham. What does that mean? When James 1.13 says that God doesn't tempt. So, how are you going to answer those type of questions if you don't study the Word of God? You have to study the Word of God. I mean, word temp, temptation, according to Hebrews 11, 17, was a trial. It was a trial. It was a test to see if Abraham loved God more than he loved his own son. It was a trial to see if he believed the promises of God. So this tempt. This temptation we're looking at is a trial. It's a test. Then what does that tell you? God will test you. That's number one thing. If you are a child of God, the first thing that I want to tell you is that Christian is going to be tempted, as in you will be tested. God doesn't do anything with a man. God doesn't do anything with a person until he tries that person out. Amen. He has to shake you and see what falls out. He has to shake you and see if you are willing to stand. Sadly, many people, when they get tried and tested, they fall. And they deny Jesus Christ. They deny their faith. Anybody can talk, as they say, right? Anybody could just say things. However, how many can really put it into action? Because 
Faithful men not only talks, but they walk the walk. If you tell God that, God, I will not commit this sin, then be faithful to it. I mean, we know that you and I are human, and we will fall here and there. But a true faithful man will do and go until they're about to die to keep that promise or to be faithful. You know, there's a chick track called Holy Joe. It's about an army person. You know, it's a great story. And it's actually written based on a testimony of a soldier, a Christian in the army. So that Christian will kneel down by his bed and pray after lights are out. Think about it. You have a bunch of, you know, wild, you know, you know those soldiers, very rough and tough, right? Foul-mouthed people. And they're in a barrack, right? And there are a bunch of people in there. And he would actually kneel down by his bed and pray after lights are out. So the first night, the other guys in the barracks threw their boots at him. Well, they see. So they start throwing their boots at him. What did this Christian do? What did Holy Joe do? He shined them and put them back beside their beds. The next night, they doused him with cold water. The third night, they shot up some blanks around him. That's when the surgeon stepped in and said, leave him alone. He can't take fire. Man, you should be like Holy Joe. You and I should be like Holy Joe. You know, we should be able to take fire. We should be able to stand up for the faith. If this Christian can stand up under the ridicule of his so-called buddies, you can stand up amongst the ridicule of your buddies. You have to be tested, and you have to pass the test for God to use you. Again, the question is, anybody could dish it out. But the real question is, can you take it? Everybody's modern thinking is what? Positive thinking. Let's be positive. Let's be positive. You, know, you will always be a winner, right? I mean, if I were to just try to grow our numbers and, you know, get a lot of views in our channel, all I have to say is you're a winner, right? Just like how Abraham was blessed, God will bless you. you know? you know, I don't have to preach about sin. I don't have to preach about you being unfaithful. I don't know. I'll just say, hey, you're a winner. And then this quote that everybody says, believe in yourself, right? How ridiculous is that? You know, if I believe in myself, you know, I'll go down the gutter and probably in jail, right? You no, know, many of you guys would just kill yourself. How many people commit suicide who believe in themselves? Right? Many, right? If you continue to believe in yourself, you know, one day you might just kill yourself, you know, jump off the bridge because results are all like failures. I believe that I could do it. I didn't. Or you could even be like, I did it, but there's nothing more afterwards. Man, I accomplished this goal A, B, C. Now what? That's a lot of success with people, doctors, lawyers, businessmen, or whatnot, professors, they die, commit suicide. Why? They believe in themselves and there's nothing more to it. So you don't really want to believe in yourself. So the test of character is not like whether you can win, because you know, anybody could say, I won, right? But the real question is, how do you take all these beatings that come at you? How do you take all this losing that comes at you? I mean, real character is tested when you lose. Right? You lose your money, you lose your friends, you lose your health, you lose your loved ones. That's when your test, your character is tested. And God wants to see how you stand up 
how you battle during those test times. It's hard, don't get me wrong. I mean, tests are never easy, right? Even ask these kids, you know, if they have to do like AP tests, you know, those hard exams, it's not easy. But life, as Christians, you're going to be tested. And the devil will do anything to make you fail. The devil wants you to be unfaithful. Just like how you know, he tempted Adam and Eve and so many others in the word of God throughout the history of humankind. The devil just wants you to be unfaithful. That's all he wants. I mean, if you're unfaithful to the Lord Jesus Christ, then he doesn't have to worry, worry about you. Right? He's looking for and he's looking to attack those faithful ones like Job, right? like Paul. He wants to test he wants to destroy on devil's standpoint, like a roaring lion. He wants to devour you. He wants to devour me. He wants to completely destroy our faith. That's why you can't be a lackadaisical Christian. You can't be like a wishy-washy, warm water Christian in this Laodicean age. You have to be either hot or cold and just stand up for what's right. If your flesh keeps on telling you, you're a loser. You know, you can't defeat this temptation that's on your way. You know, just tell your flesh, you're dead. Why am I listening to a dead being, right? I don't know. Do any of you guys go to a cemetery and start listening to people? I mean, do you get advice from people who's inside the coffin? Right? Hopefully not. I don't think any of you guys go to a cemetery, you know, day or night and start listening to, trying to get some advices from dead, right? No. Why do you listen to your flesh? Crazy. Consider it dead, right? Yeah. If it's telling you something, just think of it as a crazy thing, crazy person telling you. If you're walking down the street and some crazy guy who's high start telling you, hey, you know, ride that bus. There's a million dollars in that bus, you know, and it's, all, it's in a, you know, bad neighborhood. Go over there, ride it. Someone in there is going to give you a million bucks. I mean, you got to be like, oh, you're crazy, right? And I'm not going to listen to you. However, your flesh is telling you the same thing, giving you all those, you know, bad things for you to do, which will keep you unfaithful, and you're like, ah. Oh, you know, okay, sounds very enticing. Instead of just knowing and stop at the point, like, you know what? You're dead. I don't want to listen to that thing, you know? That person, why? Why? I mean, I don't want to look crazy. Right? Because you're going to be tried. Turn your Bibles to Psalms chapter 12. Psalms chapter 12. Psalms chapter 12. You're... you're prayer, my prayer shouldn't be, Lord, please keep me away from every trial. Please never test me. Your prayer should be, Lord, give me, give me the perseverance, give me endurance, you know, give me the shoulder to carry and pass these trials and tests. That's the only way you're going to get closer to the Lord and grow. Psalms 12, 6, the Bible says, The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Think about it. God had Lord Jesus Christ tried. His own son tried. Don't you think that he's going to try you as a child of God? It's obvious. I mean, why do you think sometimes accidents happen in your life? What do you think sometimes illness comes to your way? Why do you think suddenly your you know, well-to-do business suddenly collapses? Why do you think some of the friends that you thought were friends suddenly desert you? Why do you think there's troubles in the household? Why? Because... You're, you have to go through that testing period. If Lord Jesus Christ went through it, 
and God tried Lord Jesus Christ, his own begotten son, and if you are a child of God, if you trust Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you're going to be tested. Look at Abraham. He had Lot, right? His nephew. He was tried. But he fell, right? So you could see that everybody, everyone will be tried. Lot pitched his tent towards where? Sodom. And he ended up losing both of his, you know, married daughters. His wife turned into a pillar of salt. And last thing you know is that he was committing hideous things with his other two daughters in the cave. What does that tell you? He wasn't faithful when he was tested. So you see an example Lot is like many times you and I. We get tested. And then you see this green pasture. You see Sodom. You see Gomorrah. You're like, okay. I'm going to pitch my tent over there. Because that's where I know I'll enjoy my life to the fullest. Instead of thinking about what's best for you, in regards to serving the Lord, you always think only about how can I make my life and my family life better. When you, you and your family becomes what? Priority in your life? You'll never be faithful to God because he's not your number one in the first place. Then, of course, you know, when things go well, you think everything's, you know, okay, but when suddenly things start going south, it doesn't go well, then you start blaming everybody. That's when unfaithful people start blaming God. I mean, if you have a character and tendency of blaming God, then you're very unfaithful. Especially if you're a Christian. If you trust the, the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, there's no way you could ever blame God for anything that goes on in your life. I mean, He wants what's best for you more than any other being in the whole universe. The problem is not with Him. The problem is with you. Like, the problem is with me. Why should I blame God and complain to God about the situation that I'm in when he wants what's best for me? I mean, when you think about your children, your parents, you know, as a loving parents, right? Do you test your children? Do you discipline your children because you hate them? No, you do it because you want what's best for them. Because you know through this, through these trials and testing, they'll become a better human being. They'll become a better son. They'll become a better daughter. Then God will definitely test you. You go through pain, persecution, ridicule, loneliness, discouragement, poverty, whatever you name it. But what did Job say in 23.10? When he had tried me, I shall come forth as gold. We have patch songs, right? I shall come forth as gold. Notice that Abraham is tested on what he loves. So whatever you love, you will be tested on that one. If you love your wife, you got to be tested. If you love your husband, you got to be tested. If you love your children, you're going to be tested. If you love your car, you're going to be tested. If you love your money, you're going to be tested. If you love your physical appearance, you got to be tested. You're going to be tested. Just like Abraham loved Isaac, his son, he was tested. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 22. Genesis chapter 22. You will never be fully tested until you are tested on the things that you love. So if you haven't been tested on things that you love, trial hasn't even started. It's coming along your way. But for some, 
You are going through it, and you've gone through it. James chapter 22, verse 2. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a barn offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. I mean, this is where you see a faithful man, Abraham. Isaac means laughter. So Lord's telling me to kill my laughter for my life? Abraham, I mean, think about it. And then when we look at it, it wasn't just a single day's journey. It's a couple days' journey. I mean, third day, right? He saw the place afar off. Then what do you think was happening? First night, second night, don't you think so many thoughts are going through his head? Yes. I mean, okay, I have to sacrifice my own son, whom I receive at an old age, who I named Isaac whose laughter, who gives me laughter for my life. I'm sure the devil was attacking him 24-7. So you, just like Abraham, will be tested on things that you love. Whatever that is, right? The thing that you love the most, you will be tested. And Jesus Christ was asking, you know, Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these in John 21, 15. That's going to be how it's going to work in your Christian walk. What if the Lord asked you the same question he asked Peter? Lovest thou me more than these? And these will be your most precious things in your life, most lovable things in your life. Lovest thou me more than these? Do you love me more than your son? Do you love me more than your wife? If you don't care about your family, do you love me more than your money? Do you love me more than your fame? Do you love me more than your power? Do you love me more than your physic? More, do you love me more than anything? When you don't, what's going to happen? You go through the testing period, and just like Lot, You'll fail. What, the, what happened to Lot? He lost everything. I mean, he lost everything. And that's going to happen to you. And that's going to happen to me. If we do not pass the test. All right, so you have to think very seriously. I mean, for, for children, right? And as, you know, as we went through school, if we don't pass the test, we just fail, right? We just get a grade. That's it. However, in your Christian walk, if you fail the test, and if you don't stay faithful and you become unfaithful, it's not just the grade that you're going to lose. You can lose a lot of things. You could lose your health. You could lose your wife, your husband, your children, your job. You name it, anything. Why? Because the Lord's going to ask you, lovest thou me more than these? I mean, do you love the Lord Jesus Christ more than anything? You say yes, amen, then wait for the testing. It's coming. Because don't think that you could just say, you know, I love you, Lord, more than anything in my life. I give my life to you. Then okay, Lord, it's going to be like, okay, it's testing time. I tested my own son. I tested Abraham. I tested everybody. Okay, so now it's your turn. Let's see what you got. And Lord does it in a way where you could handle it. He never gives you a burden or test that you cannot handle. So don't give excuses to the Lord, to me, or anybody, you know, who could, who has an ear to hear you. Man, you know, when that testing happened, I couldn't handle it. No. Lord gives you the strength. The Lord gives you everything you need to go through it. And that's what happened to Abraham. You know, Matthew 22, 37, 38 says what? Jesus said unto him, 
Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And do you love the Lord more than anything? Literally. Do you love him with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your mind? I mean, that's a question that you and I have to ask on a daily basis. I mean, today, not yesterday, not when I first got saved, when I was on fire for the Lord, but today, after month, after years and years of, you know, time has passed by as a saved Christian, do I love the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, and with all my mind? None other comes before the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the question that you and I have to ask on a daily basis. You know, when you wake up and pray in the morning, you got to pray about that. You got to ask yourself about that when you wake up or when you go to sleep. Because one thing you and I know is that devil is not letting you alone. Devil is roaming, seeking whom he may devour. Abraham was a friend to God. I mean, we say, what a friend we have in Jesus, right? Are you faithful to Lord Jesus Christ? As a faithful man, Abraham went to where God sent him. Are you willing to go wherever God sends you? I mean, that's the next question, right? Are you willing to go wherever God sends you? You're like, ah, oh, I'm so comfortable in California. They have a lot of great food. You know, I can't imagine you know, going to some other place and enjoying this type of food. So is food more important to you than serving the Lord? I have too many friends in California. You know, everywhere is my friend. If, if I were to go to like some other state, I have nobody. You know, It's not for me. Or you have other excuses. Man, I don't have, man, my job's here. You know? uh, I don't think I could bear another job in a different place. Or like, you know what, you know. My spouse would never want me to go anywhere. My family would never want me to go anywhere. When you know if you're sold out to the Lord, if you want to be faithful to the Lord, and you know that Lord's telling you, and you know in your conviction that you need to go somewhere else to serve the Lord. And if you say no to him, you're not a faithful man, woman, child. You're just not that faithful. Abraham, you could see, right? He just went where the Lord told him to go. If you truly want to be a faithful servant of God, you cannot have this in the well mentality. I'm only going to serve the Lord within this well. I'll serve the Lord wherever he sends me. And don't think that the Lord's going to just send you right away after this sermon, right? Like, you know, you're not there yet anyways. But for those who want to love the Lord and serve the Lord with all of your heart, soul, and mind, one day as you pass the trials, the test that the Lord sends on your way, He'll be like, okay, it's time to go. Will you be faithful to follow me? Will you be faithful, faithful to obey me and just go wherever, wherever I tell you to go? And don't tell me it's impossible to do it. Look at the missionaries. Look at the pastors. They were faithful. They're willing to say yes to the call. So not everybody will be called to go out somewhere and preach, be a missionary. But some, Lord will call you. Then, are you going to be like Abraham? He said, here am I. You know, here I am, Lord. Just let me know where I need to go. If you're not going to serve the Lord, and when you're called to serve him somewhere, you're going to have a, you know, how should I say unfulfilling Christian life. There's no fulfillment. You are here, 
serving in a local church. I don't know. We were doing good stuff. Street preaching, visitation, you know, giving tithe, you know, having fellowship. But something inside you is telling you, man, this isn't everything. Because maybe you're that person that Lord called to go out somewhere in this God-forsaken, lost world. Billions are on their way to hell and serve him somewhere. If you know that call, then you will start working towards that call. How? What do you mean? You're not just going to go, okay, goodbye church, you know, I've been called to go to, you know, Texas, and then you have your final, you know, service. No, you start growing. You're going to study the word of God. You're going to learn in the, from the followers of God and grow and grow and get ready. And when Lord sees that heart, he's going to open that door at the right time. Okay, he's ready to go. And at that time, if you still have that mindset, you know, here am I, Lord, send me, then you're going to go and serve the Lord over there. And lastly, you know, due to time, I have more things. Faithful man is in agreement with godly Christians. Now, Isaac was in agreement with his dad. Think about it. A daddy says, I'm going to die. He's going to kill me. But I trust him because I know I trust whom he trusts. A lot of times, there are, Christians go through a lot of disagreements, you know, arguments, and everything. But in order for you to be faithful, you have to be faithful together as Christians. You have to have one mind, right? You are body of Christ. Don't you want to serve the Lord faithfully together instead of you know, going behind people's back and talking bad about you know, the pastor's, pastor's wife, and whoever the brethren are, whoever, whatever the ministry is? You believe what the Word of God says. Then you need to act like it, and you need to you know, show your faithfulness in it. You'll be in agreement, and you'll follow godly Christians. If you don't have that, then you can't be faithful. When Isaac and Abraham were faithful, the Lord blessed them, right? God provided that ram for Abraham to sacrifice in the place of his son. Amen. Just remember that the Lord will provide in life. He'll provide in death, and he'll provide after death. That's our Lord. And he's an almighty God. Then last final question is, right? Will you give yourself to the Lord from now on and being faithful to him for whatever the call, whatever the situation is? Then you will have an end like Abraham. If not, you will end up like Lot. Let's pray.